Are we sure that Blade is going to come out? I believe we discussed on Ripping the Silverback myself and asked my co-host, the Silverback himself. Because the more that this happens, I believe he was signed on Marcella Ali, though he's already acted as another character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for whatever reason they brought him in to play Blade. I guess we're supposed to forget that he was in Luke Cage. But who cares because reasons. He was signed on to play Blade. And I believe that was in 2019. And to my knowledge, they haven't done Jack Diddley squat with it. And OG Wesley Snipes, the Blade himself, chimed in on a post. But I want to talk about this real quick. It's covered by, by a variety in which this article says that they continue to hit speed bumps. Right here, Blade timeline, five years and counting. Whole lot of things have happened. You can go read that article if you want to read it. But it does talk about that another director and Jan Demange has exited the damn movie. And my man uh, Wesley says, Blade, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. Folks still looking for the secret sauce. Rod snowmobiles in traffic, man. You know those. They always trying to upskate up a hill, motherfuckers, man. You got to watch them. It's kind of rough. Day walkers make it look easy, don't they? And that was a post on Twitter, um, which was pretty uh, hilarious if you saw the actual tweet. Let's put this thing into perspective here, guys. Ali is now in his 50s. If we assume that in like the heyday of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, if they went ahead and green lit this, they could have just, if that was the case, they should have just rebooted it with Snipes because he would have been in his 50s as well. Hell, if they started in 2019 with Snipes, by the time this gets released, it would have probably been shot at the same age that Snipes is, or Snipe would have been. It would have been shot at the same age because keep in mind, Ali is only 11 years younger than he is. He's only, he's in his 50s. Wesley Snipes is only 11 years older than Ali. Now, you remember the old story that came out? I covered this. We covered this on, uh, I believe, Ribbon of Silverback as well. It was this old, uh, they don't know what to do with this damn character. It seemed like originally the script had, I guess it was focusing on like Blade's daughter or something like that. And they were going to be talking about other stuff that nobody cares about because apparently it is so difficult to make a, bl uh, make a Blade movie where the man just fucks up vampires. Guys, I don't think this movie's coming out. I can't say definitively, but I don't think this movie's going to drop. They don't know what to do. And you know why they don't know what to do? I think it's important to discuss, and I don't think the mainstream will ever discuss it. They're stuck between this sort of rock and this hard place, right? They got an original black character. Really, you can argue that if it wasn't for Blade, you don't get to Marvel Cinematic Universe because of when it dropped in the late 90s. That was during the time when Marvel also was going bankrupt. And they got their trust renewed in the cinema. Marvel did through Blade. Okay. Unfortunately, they also caught up in this hyper social nonsense. And I know because it's tiring, people don't want to discuss that aspect of it. But I think it's very important. I talked about this with the whole acolyte situation. Even if you look at the canon breaking things, the lore breaking things that are part of that storyline. In isolation, great. But you need to understand that if it weren't for the hyper-focusing on the social issues, you don't get all that other stuff. It gets in the way, and that's why it's so rotten. That's why it's so dirty. When you're focusing on, on, check, on, on checking boxes first and foremost, of course all the other stuff that should be prioritized is put on the back burner, and you get what you get. You get the stories that you get because they're focusing on the wrong thing. So you, if you want to address the latter point, you have to address the former. And I think that's the problem that they're running into because, well, the elephant's in the room. You better acknowledge it. And that's people have lost faith in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. OK, you don't have much goodwill left if there is any. I believe even if this makes a billion dollars, the Deadpool movie makes a billion dollars, it won't amount to anything. It's, it'll be looked at as an outlier, just like, the, like Hollywood in general has outliers right now. They can't crap out billion-dollar films anymore. Those days are gone, bros. But you also have committed to this audience 
they're all among your ranks. So if you do, like, how how does any sort of showrunner, uh, director even for that matter, say, guys, maybe we shouldn't focus on this other stuff? A producer, an executive producer says, maybe we shouldn't focus on other stuff. Well, you're going to get thrown under the bus. They're going to call you racist. They're going to call you. This is the bed that y'all made. So it's almost impossible for them to pivot. Good luck, though. Um, it's it's a it's a crying damn shame. And that's lets you know how screwed things are, that they are having difficulty making a fucking blade film. What should be a layup? What should be a no brainer? Badass in shades. Fucks up vampires. I got your story wrote for you right there. It's not a rocket science. It's almost the easiest and definitely because it's already been market tested. It's the easiest probably movie that you could make right now. The easiest one. And they can't figure it out. You know why? Because they're tied up in all of this garbage. And it's so impossible for them to pivot. Unfortunate. Thanks for watching. Be sure to head over to Riververse.com to check out our comic book company. We have books, plenty of merchandise, and even some glorious animations from Riververse Studios. 